Hello everybody, Ian Robson here, welcome back to American Truck Simulator. Today we are exploring, or once again we are exploring Arizona. Uh, today we are in Camp Verde, which is where we left off last time, and we're going to Tucson, I think is how you're supposed to pronounce it. It's not Tuscan, uh, it's Tucson I believe, is how you're supposed, most people pronounce it. Tucson, Arizona. Anyways, uh, so we have nothing fancy here today, we just have some furniture. And... Uh, what the furniture looks like in the sell goods container trailer. Interestingly enough, I don't know if I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or noticed this before, but uh, here I'll do it in photo mode just to kind of point it out. It's a bit easier to do it here. Um, I don't remember if the if these trailers had this little feature right here. See this little thing right here? Um, that is becoming a, a thing. Every I'm, well, at least in Canada, I've seen a lot more of it in recent years, and I believe it's a try and. Uh, I remember when I first thought, saw it, I thought, I'm like, okay, well, that's obviously to prevent cars from going underneath uh, the trailer. No. Uh, I was, I guess I had watched uh, Too Fast, Too Furious, something like that, and that's what was going through my mind. Anyways, uh, no, uh, I believe it's for, it's to kind of reduce the amount of wind buffeting, I think is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be more environmentally friendly. At least that's how the, uh, the companies often portray it as. Whether or not it actually is, I don't know. Uh, I know there's a few truck drivers out there uh, that follow my channel. So if you know exact what the exact purpose of that is, let me know. I'd be kind of curious. Alright, no one's coming there. No one. Oh, I lied. We're good that side. Let's go. Surprised I didn't hit that car. He got awfully close. All right, what do we got here? Nope, and nope. Going right, so we're good to go. And of course, apparently I uh, managed to uh, stall the c the truck on that little tiny hill. Just enough, though. Just enough. Let's see if I can do it. Nope. This is the funny part. All right. Nope. I managed to do this before. I don't know how, why I'm forgetting. It's it's been like what, maybe a couple weeks since I played this game. No, even with the parking brake on, it's not even doing it. Hmm. All right, fine. Let's take the parking brake off then. Apparently, I am stalling this thing left, right, and center. Oh, this is embarrassing. It's not that big of a hill, is it? Nope, it really isn't. It just... I don't know if they changed the physics then. I'm just a terrible driver too. That's part of, definitely part of it. Yeah. I should be able just to... Uh... Huh, that's strange. I don't know why that would stall so easily like that. Maybe something has changed and I just haven't realized. Um, I think it's mostly just due to my bad driving, honestly. There we go. And we're going straight through here. And then turning left. And there we go. Alright. Let's make our way onto the highway. Perfect. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they've changed something, but I don't think they have, honestly. I think it's just my driving, and then haven't done that in a while, so... Driving is what I mean, a truck. Uh, I did a lot of driving out west in the car, but not in a truck, so... And as I mentioned in the previous episode, I have a lot of respect for truck drivers out west. Man, they, they drive over some crazy stuff. Um, we were driving over this, uh, we were driving beside the Fraser River, which is like one of the big rivers in BC. And there was this little crazy pass uh, that we saw. It was, um, I don't know how to describe it. So basically what you did is you were driving along on like a two-lane highway, very narrow shoulder, like no shoulder at all basically, uh, on both sides. And then you came to this little kind of area in the middle. Uh, like I would all, You're going along, I'll, I'll kind of describe it differently I guess. So you're going along on this one lane high, on this two-lane highway, so you have one going one way, one going the other way no shoulder along so you're driving along this little way you're like you look down the right hand side you're basically going to go down into like a 
a huge valley if you make a mistake and happen to drive off the road. On the other side, if you make a mistake, you run into um, you run into a cliff wall in some cases. Not everywhere, but in some cases. All right, so driving along like that, and then you get this little area where uh, it goes from that uh, from that two lane highway or two one lane highway both ways to um, to an area where it becomes a single lane and a single dirt lane, and they're doing construction. And then from the single dirt lane, you go through like this little tunnel. It seemed like a little tunnel. It's like a little I don't know. It was maybe like 20 feet long. Not 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 long at all. But um, you have to make like almost what kind of degree turn was that? You have to take the turn like 30 degree, 30 kilometers an hour. I think it was actually 20 kilometers an hour. Because basically what you did is you would turn left into this little tunnel and then you had to turn right immediately after the tunnel. Now the really weird part was that you couldn't see around the corner. So you didn't know if there was anything there. So it was pretty scary actually. Uh, now the weird thing is behind us there was a truck. Uh, like a transport truck. Like the one I'm driving right here. Something like this. I have no idea what, where he went, or if he even went through that pass. But if he had tried, I'm sure he would have gotten stuck. Like it was such a, it seemed like such a narrow, low pass that if he had tried to do it, he, I'm sure he would have gotten stuck. Or maybe he got through. I don't know. But like, that's an example of what I'm thinking about when I think about truck drivers now at West. I'm just like, man, that is crazy. And then some of the, some of the grades they have. Oh, that was a waste. Some of the grades they have to drive around is just crazy. So like 18%, 20% down. No, I think we, I think the highest we had was, I think we had 120% uh, grade decline, which is pretty steep for a truck. Uh, that one was really easy, mind you, because it was super small. Uh, but some of the other ones are like long and winding. We went to this one place called Osoyoos in uh, BC. Uh, it's a desert in Canada, which I think is super neat. Uh, anyways, so it's just one little area where it's like a desert. And uh, to get down to this desert, to like this valley, essentially, it's like a semi-arid. I think it's uh, that what they call it, semi-arid. No, that was uh, somewhere else. Anyways, it was a desert area, and to get down to this valley, essentially, uh, you had to go through this like winding pass that goes down towards the valley. It was ridiculous. And there was this one area where you had to do like almost like a hairpin turn. Uh, I have no idea how the trucks were able to do it so easily, um, but I guess that's what they do on a regular basis. So. Uh, we were doing it in a car, and we were like in a small little like Velister car. It's called super, super small. Uh, makes doing those types of things super easy. But we did it in that, and we were driving super slow the whole time around those bends because uh, it's one of those things where you just don't know what to expect. If, if you've never done it before, you're just like, "Whoa, what's going on here?" Um, but it was just crazy. Well, it looks pretty nice, actually. Yeah, so far I'm uh, I'm pleased with the way Ariz uh, Arizona's turning out actually. So I almost said Tucson, but it's Arizona I'm looking at specifically. Uh, Tucson is in Arizona, uh, but it looks pretty good actually. I'm uh, I'm delightfully surprised. It's what I kind of expected. Um, I'm looking forward to when we see some like uh, green areas. I guess is what I want to say, because uh, a lot of what we've seen so far has been like yellowish brownish sort of idea. Uh, that's just because where they started, right? So, if they started somewhere else, like they started in California, I guess California is not all desert. Um, I have to remember that. All right, so where is our turnoff? Let's see, Tucson downtown. Yes, I saw a lot of low signs, not Tucson specifically, but downtown signs. Whoa! Not enough space to <laughs> slow down there. Yikes. Imagine if that would have happened in real life. That would have been just... Yep, that would have been a whole car that would have... Uh, definitely would have gotten <laughs> into an accident there. I don't know. Maybe a trucker would have done that. Actually, one of the cool things... Um, one of the things we noticed... I'm going to see if I can just convince this car I need to come into this lane. There we go. Nice. One of the funny things, not the funny things, but one of the things we saw out west was these things called runaway lanes. I, I don't think I've ever seen them in Ontario before, um, but it totally makes sense why they have them. Really? I'm turning left? Okay. Oh, because I need to go over that pass. Okay. Uh, they have these runaway lanes, they're called, 
And uh, basically what they are is, in case you lose braking or whatever, has to, whatever something like that, you lose braking. Oh, that goes back on the highway. I don't want to go there. What am I doing? Uh, in case you lose braking or something, you could uh, go into this runaway lane. And it's basically like you go into this lane, it goes uphill, and then it slows you down. Uh, that's the idea behind it, at least. But they were all, like, fairly frequent. And often what they would have, before that, they would have, like, a brake check area where you would check your brakes before you went down the hill. Oops, that's not my turn. Uh, before you went down the hill. So that if, for whatever reason, your brakes did fail still, even after checking your brakes, um, they had this runaway area. It was pretty, like... I had never seen that before, so it was pretty bizarre to see those types of things. Like, it makes perfect sense, though. Because, uh... If you don't... There we go. Get in the gear there. If you don't uh, check your brakes and you actually do end up with a problem... That's why they have those areas. But man, like, they were all over the place. But it makes total, total sense. Because if you didn't do something like that, you know, it could create a huge problem. Like, if you're an independent trucker and you uh, manage to damage your cargo, like, that's bad news bears. So it's in your interest, in your best interest, I should say, to actually check your load to make sure that um, it was safe, basically. Man, there's tons of those little areas. And, like, it looked like some of them had been used, too. So it was, like, a little, like, a little frightening when you think about that. Because, like, usually you see the check brakes area. And then you go downhill somewhere, like, you know, 10-15% grade downhill decline. And usually, that is where you would see... Uh, is this a turn up here? Yeah. And that is where you would see the... Let's get in here. I think our turn's right here, yeah. Let's bring this down to gear. And that's usually where you would see it, like it would be on a hill somewhere. And uh, that was pretty scary, some of them. No, I, I can't. Like, we're in a small car, like I said before, so, like, it wasn't that bad, but if, uh... Oh, there's a beacon on that thing. Oh, neat. Uh, if I had been driving a truck, I would run into some of those areas. I'd have been petrified, I think. Uh, just because I've never done it before. And, uh, it would have been really scary. Alright, let's see if we can watch the, uh... The decoupling of the legs. There we go. Sweet. Excellent. Even though we went in the dirt, that one little area. Sweet. So there you go, that's Tucson. Let's just uh, take a little quick little drive around Tucson while we're here. Uh, take the parking brake off. Alright, can we do a UE here? Yes. Perfect. Alright, what do we got here? So this is Tucson. I like what I see in this so far. I don't know if there's any kind of signature thing in Tucson, Arizona. There may be. I don't know what it is though. Trains. That train is just standing still though, or sitting still. Alright. So what we'll do is we'll go around this area, we'll explore downtown a little bit. And we'll see what we can see downtown, and then we'll go... And we'll stop there, I think. That's funny. Managed to stall the car. Stall the truck right there. That's funny. Alright. Stop sign turning left off a of highway. Always fun to do. Okay, okay. Looks not too bad. I don't know if there's any, like I said, I don't know if there's anything specific in Arizona or in Tucson, sorry, that uh, is really specific to. Arizona, uh, Tucson, Arizona, but looks pretty good. Live here, eat free. Ooh. Fancy. It looks pretty nice, actually. Got some palm trees there. 
I haven't seen any cacti. I think there's Arizona has cacti in it. If I had to guess. All right, sweet. Looks pretty good. Let me know what you guys think. All right, so I'm gonna pull over. No one's ever gonna question that. And uh, we'll stop it there for now, folks. There you go, Tucson, Arizona. Right by the Rosewood family apartments. Lovely. Anyways, folks, that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, look at Tucson, Arizona. My name's Ian Robson. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for some more American Truck Simulator. So again, this is checking out the public beta. So it's not the full DLC technically yet, but it's the public beta. All right, I'll catch you guys later.